So beautiful, wasn't it? Father, we just thank you for your presence in this room. Father, we thank you that you have a plan for today. I had a plan, God, but I lay my plan aside. And Father, I come to pick up your plan and to walk with the Holy Ghost today. Precious Holy Spirit, touch your people, I pray. I pray that we not walk out the way we come in, but we walk out refreshed, renewed, healed, more of Jesus to be seen in us. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to start with a diff different scripture. I want to read out of Isaiah, please. Isaiah 60. One, Isaiah 61. Hallelujah. Many years ago, we got a phone call, and it was before we were pastors at this time. We were home group leaders in our church, and there was a couple on the phone. They both were legally blind. Uh, they wore telescopes on their glasses so that they could see. And the young man had been an alcoholic. And he called to talk to Daniel uh, about alcoholism and being pulled back into it. And he said, would you all pray with us? And uh, I, we had just got through eating. I was about to clean the table up. And I said, uh, well, Daniel, you're going to have to take care of this one. I was not raised around alcohol. I lived in a county that you were not allowed to sell alcohol. My parents had never drunk it since I had been born. I knew nothing about it, and it scared me. And I said, honey, you were raised half your family alcoholics, so you know what to do. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't, but he knew what they were like at least. And he said, uh, don't think you're going to get away that easy, Paula. He said, the only one who can help an alcoholic is Jesus. And you have got to be able to hear Jesus today. So I went in, and as I was washing the dishes, all of a sudden the Spirit of God began to sing the verses here. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And as the spirit of the Lord began to sing this song, it felt like a blanket was put around my shoulders. And all I could do was fall in the floor and weep before a holy God. I didn't know what he was going to do, but I knew he would be there. When that man came and sat down with his wife at our table, I began to hear the voice of the Lord, just like thoughts, but they weren't my thoughts, in my mind. And he said, tell the man that I love him. And I love his brother, and I love his sister. I knew nothing about them. I didn't know he had a sister. But God was speaking words to give him the assurance that God was present so that God could speak to him. You know, the Bible tells all of us as born-again believers to covet. He says, covet, desire with your whole heart to be able to prophesy. That's what you do when you speak the word of the Lord. You are prophesying to somebody what God is saying because a word that comes from God changes lives. And that's what I am believing for today, that I am here as the prophetess of the Lord to speak his word to you that will change your life. Maybe not because you need a, a, a healing, 
but because you need to be stirred to be the one God can use as the healer for somebody else or to speak the word for somebody else. When I was in South Africa, I know I've told this story when I was here before, but all of you haven't heard it. When I was in Afri South Africa, God told me to speak on the anointing. And when I talk on the anointing, there is a power that comes present, and I feel it. It'll just fill me, and then I'll just, I've got to do something with that power in me. So I'll tell five people, stand out. I do, and they're in the floor. I'm not the one usually that has that power anointing that just shoots people down, except when I'm teaching on the anointing. And I barely got started, and I became very aware that there was a presence of extreme evil in this room. There were probably 250 people. I was told we were in a very dangerous territory, and it was a place where most of the congregation were originally from Pakistan. There were Pakistani Indians in that room, mostly, who had found Jesus Christ as their Savior some recently. And I could feel the presence of murder in that room. And I stopped, and I said, God, what do I do? He said, you tell them what you find, what you sense, and that I'm going to deliver that anger from the person that has it. And so I shared with them what I sensed and what God was saying, and a man just jumped up, a young man, probably in his late 30s. And he looked like he could kill me any minute, like he had knives, guns, or something. Mm -hmm. And he stood up, and when he did, maybe seven other people stood up. And uh, I said, well, thank y'all for being so brave. Now, will you come down here and let Jesus deliver you and anyone else? Thirty people, they told me, were lined up in the line. And I don't understand why God does it like he does, but maybe so I will be uh, encouraged. But sometimes he lets me know what he's doing. And as I went down the line commanding the spirit of anger to come out, about every fourth or fifth person, God told very specifically why they had the anger. I got to this young man that was the first one up, and God began to speak about the anger he felt because he never knew his dad. He never knew his father. His father had been murdered when he was two years old, and he was angry at God, at life, at man, kind, mankind. And God said, you feel that your father was stolen from you, and this is the root of your anger. And then he just began to weep. And I gave a salvation call after I got through the 30 people, and he was the first one up and gave his heart to Jesus. Then I prayed for the baptism. He wanted anything I said I had. Up he came, and I said, Jesus wants to give it to you. And he got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And after the meeting was over, I found out his story. He had just found out who murdered his father. And he had bought two guns, he had a couple of knives, and he had become so angry his teenage daughters were terrified of him, and so was his wife. And his plan was to kill the murderer of his father. The murderer was his mother and a man she was having an affair with who pretended to be his stepfather all these years. And he was so angry that his intent was to kill. Well, just the night before, I had been there speaking. And that night, God had supernaturally healed a woman who had had an accident that had damaged the whole right side of her body, and God had completely healed her. So word had got out that there's a little grandma from Texas, and God does miracles when she prays. And God had even healed a dog. And so they got excited. And they called this lady and said, if you can get your husband there, God will touch him. And God did. God set that man free and brought healing into his family where he was able to release the murder 
that had come into his heart. Well, I see a lot of men with a lot of anger. And sometimes people think, well, that's just a man's way. No, no, that's not so. When the anger is so uncontrollable that we cannot walk in love with the people we should love the most, then something's wrong. And God wants to set us free. And we find that women go to all the meetings and they're, they're ready to just weep and cry in front of everybody and get free. But many times the gentlemen are not ready for that. But I see Jesus softening their hearts and bringing them to a place of wholeness. My daughter is a Christian counselor and she is so anointed. She is good as a counselor. But on top of that, she hears God. So if the, doing the world's way of counseling doesn't work, the Spirit of God just speaks to her, and God does the job. She was asked to be, um, to, to be the counselor for some young man that was up for juvenile court. And because she had graduated from Oral Roberts University, and there were some people that uh, thought that was something to joke about, they gave her the hardest case. They had no respect for the university, and they didn't think that there's any way she could help this young man and she would be made a fool of. Well, they didn't know. They found a preacher's daughter who learned how to pray from the time she's three years old and has been hearing God most of that time. So before she walked into the court, she said, God, would you show me how to touch this young man's heart? Show me where he's tender. And God said, go ask him, what was it, a praying grandma that you had? And he just began to weep. Yes, he did. He had a praying grandma. And she said, because of the prayers of your grandma, I've been assigned to you. When the judge saw that young man broken and crying, he saw my daughter afterwards and said, what in the world did you do? She said, I prayed. You see, she's a testimony. Wherever the people want to make fun of Oral Roberts or Oral Roberts University, she is a testimony that people graduate from that university who hear the living God and can speak what God wants them to speak. And because of being able to hear God and speak his word gently in a way that was acceptable to that young man, his life was changed. Well, sometimes she would get people in the counselor's office that even with her anointing, she couldn't find the answers. And she would say, Mom, when are you coming to Tulsa? And I would tell her, well, next week or something, and she'd say, okay, I want you to come early enough to pray over a couple of my clients. She said, we're going to do a pastoral counselor prayer meeting. Okay, Mom? I would come in, and they would be lined up in the waiting room waiting for the pastor to come to pray. Well, what she meant by pastoral prayer, I would just lay my hands on them and begin to pray. Now, I might start just blessing them because I didn't know what to say. Some people, like Joe, when they prophesy, they just stand up, thus saith the Lord, and it just spews out. It doesn't just do that with me normally. Normally, I go to pray for somebody, and all of a sudden, it's not me praying. It's the Spirit of God, and I'm comfortable that way. So that's what I would do. I would come in, I'd lay my hand, and I would just get comfortable before the Lord, get to talking about him, and he'd get to sharing about the person and talking about them. Well, she had a young preacher she asked me to pray for. This young man had gotten saved in his early 20s. He had been an alcoholic, a drug addict. He had come off of all of this and had become a dynamic preacher, was traveling the world, had written a book, he had gone to Italy and run into some of the famous quote-unquote evangelists from America, and they invited him to join them for a meal. And the waiter comes over and says, what do you want to drink? And so they ordered some liquor. Well, we just don't do that normally. 
when we're spirit-filled or Pentecostal. That's not the normal route, in my opinion, for the preachers to go. And he said to them, you mean you're drinking? Because he knew they would never have done that in America. And they said, oh, when Rome, do like the Romans do. What do you want? And out of his mouth popped the name of the liquor that he used to get drunk on as a teenager. And from the time he took that drink, he was back again under the bonds of alcohol. You know, if there is no other reason for Daniel and I to say no thank you for liquor, it is because you never know who might see you drink and choose to drink and be the one who cannot handle liquor. There are people, it's like it's in their blood, one drink and they're gone. So I never had a choice to make, I just never did it. But he had to make that choice. So anyway, I knew this about the young man. And from the time he got back to America, there was an anger in him. Anger itself, anger over getting trapped, anger at the preachers who were doing it. I mean, he was blaming everybody. But it was his own choice. He made a choice, and it was not a good choice. So when I went to pray for him, though, all of a sudden, I began to see a television show, so to speak, going in front of me. I saw a um, brick house. I saw steps that went downwards. Now, where, where I grew up in Texas, we don't have basements. But I knew this was a basement that they were going down into. And I saw this person being a young man, maybe 10 or 11, being taken down into this basement, and I knew that's where the destruction of his life began. And when I said that, he began to weep. At the very age God gave me, his stepfather had taken him down into the basement, introduced him to pornography, and had molested him. And then after he got out of the clutches of his father, he belonged to a church where the minister continued what the stepfather had begun. And he had been abused by people who should have protected him. And he didn't know how to get free of the anger that was in him. But precious Jesus revealed that to set him free and reached deep within him and pulled out the agony. The crying that I heard was from the agony of a soul that had suffered for many, many years. And part of it he had caused himself to forget because it hurt too much to think about. But God healed him and God set him free. God loves us. God hurts over the brokenhearted. The very first sermon Jesus himself preached was what I just read to you. His announcement to the world is the Spirit of God is upon me. God has sent me that you might be healed of the wounds, of the hurts, be released from the captivity that you have been bound into because of life. The Bible says that Satan is the God of this world. He is not a good God. He hates us. He brings destruction. Jesus said he came, uh, that the devil came with, uh, <laughs> went out of my brain, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. It's something that seems to go with 70. You go to say a verse and it wants to run away. But it has to come back. Satan came. Jesus himself warned us, I came to bring you life, but he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Good people have bad things happen. Bad things happen to good people because of who the God of this world is. And that's why we have got to realize that we live in the kingdom of God
and God is wanting the kingdom of God to become victorious and to be the ruling kingdom of this world again. He is wanting us to begin to take authority and to rule and to reign through the Lord Jesus Christ. When uh, I was in Ireland many years ago, down in the south, I went to a place for a meeting and they had about 150, 200 people in this room. And I was teaching about shame and how things can happen to us that bring a spirit of shame. And that shame can keep us from ever being who God wants us to be. And when I gave a prayer line, there was a young man who got in the prayer line and he happened to be the one that God went right to the root of the issue. And God is such a, a precious God that he gave me words that I would never have known maybe what I was talking about had I not had the experience I've had and come to understand how God clothes certain things so the person can understand but not necessarily everybody in the room. But I saw a statue, and I knew what church it was, and I knew what had happened. And as I began to pray over the situation that took place in that young man's life, he began to weep. And then it nearly freaked him out. And the minute I said amen, and he got himself up off the floor, he tried to get out of the room as quick as he could. And one of the ushers stopped him. Because when the man first came in, he said, can anybody come to this meeting, to the usher? And the usher said, oh, yes, you're very welcome. And they said, how did you find out about it? He said, I was at the, a hus at the hospital sitting on the thing you sit on, and he said, they were getting ready to admit me for surgery for my back. And he said, while I was waiting on them to get everything, I picked up a newspaper and it said, woman from America with the gift of healing will be ministering at this town. I don't even know where the town was. And he said, I called a taxi and told the nurse, I'm going to this meeting. If I don't get healed, I'll be back tomorrow, and you can check me in for the surgery. But I'm scared to death of the surgery. So he got in the taxi, drove to the meeting, and then I scared him as bad as the doctor scared him. And he was ready to run back to the hospital. But the usher said, please stay. And he said, well, how does she know what she says? How does she know what happened to me? And they said, God is in this place. And God knows all your wounds and all your hurts. And sometimes we have to be healed of wounds and hurts before the physical things can be healed. So the man waited and came up and accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior, was born again, and then I prayed for his back, and God completely healed his back. We serve such a wonderful God. I have the most wonderful job if you want to call it a job, that anybody could ever have. When I was three years old, I walked into the bedroom and saw my grandmother with this big Bible, and it had big pictures of heaven, and of uh, Moses, and I don't remember. All the old Bibles used to have these beautiful portraits in them. And I was asking Grandma, where is this place? She said, it's called heaven. And I said, who gets to go there? She said, those who want to serve God, who choose to love him, and choose to love his son, Jesus. I made up my mind at three years old, I was going to that place. When I went to Oral Roberts University and I had to do my oral exams to get my uh, upper level degrees, they quizzed me on hell. And I said, why are you asking me about this? He said, because you never talk about it. And I said, I don't plan to go there. I haven't been headed there. I have been headed heavenward, and that's what I'm searching for, is to know about heaven and to know about God. I, he said, well, do you believe in hell? And I said, sure. There's people going there, but I'm just not one. And they were concerned and would have refused to graduate me if I didn't believe in hell. And I said, yes, it's just not my major concern. And they said, okay. 
That's all we wanted to know. Well, I chose to serve Jesus as a child. Scared mom and dad, they thought I was going to end up a nun because we were in the Catholic Church my first four years of life. Mom wanted grandchildren. So first opportunity, we went back to her Baptist church. And there I found Jesus. To serve Jesus is an honor and a joy. And God is calling each one of us daily to be his children, to bring joy and peace to our neighbors, to our children, to our boss, to whoever we come in contact with. And God brings healing wherever we go. There's some places that we go we can't talk about Jesus maybe as openly until God opens that door. And when the door is open, he sees to it that we can speak what he wants spoken to the people who are there listening. I was speaking in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I was speaking on disappointments and how things can happen that disappoint us. And maybe the way we handle our disappointment is just get tougher, get more hardened, less joyful, are angry. And when I gave an altar call, there was a young man in his late 20s that came to the altar just weeping. And the Spirit of God began to speak to him. The enemy came to steal and to kill. Instead of running to me, you ran away from me. And sorrow has filled your life. I found out his precious baby had died. And instead of coming to God in his hurts and in his wounds, he ran from God. But that day, he ran to the altar. And Jesus Christ healed his broken heart and took the pain that was there away from him. Our Jesus loves us, and he is looking for answers. I want you to look with me at 1 Samuel 20. The Bible lets us understand people by reading about the people in the Bible. He lets us understand about ourselves. Sometimes we read about King David and we read where he's so upset, he says, God, just take their teeth and pull them out. Cut their tongue off. Let their wife die. You know, he's upset. And he recorded his thoughts there in the Bible. But somewhere he comes to the place where he's praising God. And where he says to himself, so start blessing the Lord. Do you know, sometimes you have to talk to yourself because you're just not feeling all that spiffy. And you say, okay, self, let's praise the Lord. God is a good God. He is always good. He is good all the time. He is never a bad God. He is the most loving father anybody could ever have. And if you have not had a loving father, you cannot imagine what it is to have a loving God. But God is going to cause us to come to know his love. And it's through worship like you all have here, where if you come, and maybe you say, well, I'm not a singer. Okay, come and just close your eyes and say, God, if you really come in the midst of worship, Come to me too. And let God just descend and begin to minister to your heart. His love, his peace, his joy. He used to have me go to meetings and I got one word at every meeting. Someone would point to me and God, say, God says to tell you he loves you. After about the tenth time, I thought, God, are you telling me I don't know it, that you love me? He said, yes. I'm telling you, I love you. Why would I not think God loved me? I hadn't gone out and done a bunch of bad things to think that God didn't love me. I saw him do good things to other people and it wasn't happening to me. So I thought I was Cinderella with the wicked witch, the stepmother, and, and that God just patted me on the head sometimes. Well, God had to set me free of a spirit of rejection. And once I was set free, then I could sense his love. I could feel his love. 
and I could know, yes, I'm special. We're all special, every one of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In 1 Samuel 20 and verse 31, it says, For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established. This is Saul in his anger talking to his son Jonathan and said, If, if the son of Jesse, that's David, as long as he's alive, your throne is threatened. You may never be the next king as long as that son of Jesse is alive. He saw the anointing of God on David as a little boy, and he knew it threatened his son, and he hated David. He grew to hate David, but Jonathan loved his friend. David had become his friend. And this particular day, David had run from the uh, palace, and he had said, your dad wants to kill me. And Jonathan said, no way would my dad want to kill you. My goodness, David, you killed Goliath. You rescued the kingdom. My father doesn't want to kill you. And he came in to check out what David said. And he hears his father say that. David's a threat to you, son. And he said, Jonathan answered Saul, his father, and he said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What has he done? Why do you want to kill him, Dad? What has he done? And Saul cast a javelin at his own son in his anger. Do you know sometimes dads throw darts at sons because of their own anger and at daughters because of their own anger. Mamas do it too. We cast things at our children that wound their hearts, and we never come back many times and take the time to say, Mama was wrong. Dad was wrong. Forgive me. We don't do that. And we grow up in life with wounds in our hearts that are caused by what parents did out of their own insecurities, unhealthiness, their own anger, their own sickness. It says, So a Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and did eat no bread the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David because his father had done him shame. Parents, we can shame our children and affect them for life. If we do it and we become aware we've done it, the most wonderful thing you can do is be man enough or woman enough to sit down with your child and bring healing. And repenting to a child takes a big man and a big woman, but it brings wholeness. They may explode right then, but it brings a wholeness to hear someone who wounded you say, I was wrong, please forgive me. And especially when they can say, I've asked God to forgive me, but now I need you to forgive me. God taught me that when my girls were little. And there were times I would get down on my knees so I would be their height and say, now will you pray for mommy that I not do that again. And those precious daughters of mine learned to lay their little hands upon mama and say, oh, God, mama was so bad, but thank you that you forgive her. <laughs> and it brings a bond. It brings a love between a husband and a wife when they can go to each other and say, I'm so sorry. And sometimes we have to say, at first I didn't know what made me mad, but God showed me. And then humble ourselves and say, here's why I was angry. It had nothing to do with you many times. Would you forgive me? And we deal with it. Now go over to Ephesians 6, and we see that this very thing that happened to Jonathan is referred to in the New Testament. 6 verse 4. The Apostle Paul pinning the words of the Holy Ghost, 
writes to every born-again father, and he says to him, Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. In the Amplified, here is what it means. If you take the fullness of the Greek language, it means fathers, do not irritate and provoke your children to anger. Have you ever seen daddies that just pick on their children? They're trying to get them to cry, to fuss when they're little and think it's funny, think it's a joke. You open the door to a demonic force to come into the life of that child. You know, even his grandparents, that's wrong to provoke somebody to anger. And it says, do not exasperate them to resentment. So we see many times anger in the life of an adult leads to resentment. And many times we don't know what we resent, so we just resent everything. And we have a lot of resentment then we end up having to deal with. But rear them tenderly in the training and discipline and the counsel and the admonition of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that today that, that God has showed me that there will be people here who have repressed anger maybe. Maybe you've got it pretty well under control unless it's just really a bad situation and then it just explodes. But what goes with it very often can be a depression. And we can fight depression and not have any idea where in the world that thing came from. And it's from something that is repressed from a long, long time ago. A couple of years ago, I was asked to go to Abbey and to do a Father's Day service. It was the first time I'd ever done it. I had no idea what God was going to do along the lines of what I'm speaking here. And the, the whole altar was filled with men that were weeping, some who said they had never cried. And there they were just letting it go. And there was a young man whose mother and father would bring in foster children and the, uh, one of the gruff-looking men uh, told me his story. He had come in on his father molesting one of the little foster children, and he went to court as the testifier that sent his father to prison. And his father hated him, told him he hated him, and was horrible to him, rejected him completely. So he had lived... 30 or 40 years with a father who hated him for doing what was right and for rescuing an innocent person from his father. But Jesus healed him. Jesus took the wound and set him free. Hallelujah. God never embarrasses us. God can have me just pray and set you free and heal heal you, and I would never know what happened if you didn't share me your testimony. And I always ask people, please, let me know what Jesus did. Maybe you want to walk in it for a couple of days and write me a letter. I want to know what he did. It encourages me to never stop praying. It encourages me to give up my free time that I might pray in the Spirit before a meeting. You see, there is one thing for working for God. You give up time that other people don't give up. Because if I can't stay in the place of God that I need to be, I don't hear God. And when people encourage me, I just think, oh God, oh God, how wonderful you are. So today I'll let Robert, if he wants to move this. And what I want to ask, if something has identified with your heart and you want God to touch you today, in particular, if there's anger, anger that you can't account for, if there is a depression that begins to hit you, or if you just know that God pulled your heart strings today and you want to get in the line, I want you to do that. Before we call the line forth, though, 
I'm asking for the men to come first. Any man that knows Jesus needs to touch your heart. I'm asking you if you would come up here. And then we're going to do the ladies second. But I just feel like God wants to start with the men. So can I ask you to come down right now? Hallelujah. 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 His power is here to deliver, to set free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I watched y'all's eyes, fellas. There's some of you need to be up here. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is tender. He's sweet. And you don't have to cry. You don't have to cry. But Jesus wants to make you whole. You know, there, there's a young, uh, there's a, you're all young men to me. I'm 70, so that makes you young. But there's a young man sitting here, and you've got a defiance in you, um, a rebellion. You can get free today. You don't call it anger, but it's defiance, and that comes from anger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day and this is the hour. Hallelujah. 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 I always have to warn people, or not warn people, tell people, don't be afraid. One lady had heard so many stories about me that the minute she met me, she just laid out all of her garbage right on the spot. <laughs> and said, I know God's going to tell you. No, he doesn't tell me everything about people. He only tells me what he wants to heal right then and what they need to know to know it's God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I just come before you with this precious man. Father, I thank you for the love of Jesus that has flowed through his life. Father, I thank you right now to take the emptiness that is there and to fill it with yourself. For God, there's times that there's like a vacancy. And Father, he doesn't know how to fill it. I thank you to take the void from out of his life, God. Where the presence, where the presence of the love that should have been there was not there, Lord. And I thank you to flow, to flow with your love. Father, I take authority over every spirit of rejection that has hindered this man's life. I break its power and I command it to go and I loose him from its effects. And Father, I command the cause of the emptiness to go right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now I break all anger and the effects of all anger, and I command it to go. And Father, I loose him from the words that were spoken by the grandmother that have affected this man. I command those words to release him right now. Every negative word to release him. And Father, we thank you for the power of the positive words that still bring life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Father, I just thank you for the anointing for this man right now. Father, I thank you that he doesn't have to be hard. He doesn't have to be strong and macho. For God, Jesus was the most macho of men. Who else could go to the cross as he did? And Father, I thank you for your gentle spirit to come over him and be like a garment that comes upon him. And Father, there was a time that he thought maybe you had called him. Maybe he was to be separated out into a special place. But God, he didn't. He didn't take that road. But Father, I thank you, whatever his destiny is, as he comes to you and as he surrenders, God, it's not too late. 
He'll be able to fulfill the things that you have for him to fulfill. I break the power of every spirit of disappointment in self. I break its power to rule and to affect him now. And I thank you, Father God, for that release in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It's like the enemy has said to you that you were called to be a loner. And that's not the truth. That's not the truth. There is a great depth of love within you. And God is going to teach you how to properly release that love and how to release that love that he has for you. What church were you uh, born into? Church of Ireland. Church of Ireland. Uh-huh. Did you used to think you were called in, as a priest? Or? Later in life after I got saved. Huh? It was actually later in life after I got saved. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, the call, whenever God puts a call on our life, he never retracts it. And he makes up for the years the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar made. So uh, whatever he has for you, as you say, I surrender all, that's all it takes. So don't be angry at yourself anymore. Don't think you missed it and you missed God. God, well aware of everything. Father, I thank you for this man. Father, there is so much. There is so much that he could write a book on the hurts and on the wounds. But Father, we, we don't have to do that. Today, we just lift it to you and we say, would you take all the scar tissue too, Father God? For Father, where he's given things to you and he's asked you to make it whole, it, you've honored him, but yet there's like scars. And we ask that you take all of that right now and release him into that place of perfect healing. Now, Father, I thank you for healing to come into his physical body. And where the spirit of infirmity has resided, I command it to loose him and to go. And I command all physical weakness out in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for what you're doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. New strength. Father, thank you for this man. Thank you for his love for you. Father, thank you for the ministry that has gone on in his life over all these years as he's been coming to your altar to say, I want whatever you got, God, whatever you've got. Father, I thank you that you take every wound and every hurt and you remove it. And all anger, it cannot stay, not one bit of it, for he refuses it in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I break the power of every spirit of rejection. Every spirit of isolationism, I break your power. I command you to loose him in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that would speak to him in such a way to make him feel not worthy, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Father, I ask for your love to begin to flow from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. I ask that every emotion be made whole, Father God, in Jesus' name. And Father, I ask for healing in his thought life also, in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you for it, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your precious son. Father, I thank you for the anointing that flows through this life. I thank you for your healing, Father, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Father, I release him of every accusing spirit that would make him think he's never perfect enough. He's never done enough. He's never whatever. Satan, you're a liar, and I command your spirit of perfectionism to loose him and to go in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that he has a great heart of love. 
And Father, there is pain in his heart for those that he loves where things and relationships are not as they should be. So Father, I pray for your strength to go into Neil right now. And Father, this one that right now is just lifting up to you, God, show him the key and show him the answers. And God, we know that compromise is not the answer, but love is powerful. So I thank you for the power of love that flows through Neil to go out, to be released through his prayers, through his intercession, through his kindness that flows out of his eyes and the thoughtful words that he pens and he writes. In Jesus' name, I thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 It's going to be some fighting you do on your knees. Not any other way on your knees. But I also saw you writing cards where you expressed your love on that card. Hallelujah. 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 Father, I thank you for this gentleman. God, I thank you. I thank you that you have placed your robe of righteousness upon him. You have placed your spirit upon him, Father. And Father, there is something in his heart that hasn't been filled. And Father, I ask that he come to know you as Father God in a way that he has never known. And Father, I thank you that he's always looking out for someone else. But right now, you're looking out for him. And you're looking down at him. And you are releasing into him a new anointing, a new awareness of your presence in his life. And you say, worthy, worthy, worthy because of the Lamb. Not because of what you've done or what you haven't done, but because of what your Savior Jesus has done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's like the Spirit of the Lord would say, don't be so hard on yourself. It's what Jesus does that makes you great. It's what Jesus does that makes you acceptable. And as you just worship Jesus for all he's done and all he's given you, you have it all. And a joy begins to rise up that takes the place of any condemning spirit or any spirit trying to tell you what you should have done, you hadn't done or, or whatever like that. You just say, thank you, Jesus, for reminding me it's what you've done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the anointing that's going to this man. Father, I asked you to take the part of his heart that he's sealed off. And he said, I'll never be hurt like that again. Father, I ask that you enable him right now to release his whole heart to you. For God, to love is always risky. It's always taking a chance of being rejected, of being hurt, of being wounded. But the minute we say, I'll never be hurt again, we seal ourselves off even to your love. So Father, I thank you that this day there is a releasing of the heart to allow your light to be bright again and to shine bright again in his life and allow him to look, to raise his eyes and to look, God, for it's like he's been told, don't expect, don't expect. God, I thank you for the release of expectancy yes. in his life again. Father, I break the power of whatever it was that robbed him of hope. Jesus. And I command that hope to be loosed right now. The expectancy to be his. For no, he's not been put under a basket. No, he is not hidden. No, he is not less than worthy. No, he is not less than anyone. He is your precious son, God. And we thank you for it thank you, in Jesus. Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this handsome young man. I thank you, Father, that there is a call upon his life. Father, I break the power of every spirit of anger. Every spirit that would bring an agitation that would cause him to say something that he would later regret that he said. Father, every push down, every push down anger that needs to be thrown out, we pull it out right now. You spirit of anger, you loose him. All repressed anger, I command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Come out. Father, there's decisions that have been made that he doesn't understand why. Father, in his mind, it's okay. Whatever he wanted was okay because he's okay with you. But Father, sometimes in your wisdom, you place us in a place of strictness or sternness or no's when we want yeses. And it's a part of our growth. So, Father, I just thank you for peace to come into his heart. Peace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you for Killian. I thank you, Father, for your love for him. Father, I thank you for his love for you. Father, we break the power of the coating that's been put over him to hold him into a mold, to hold him into a place of strictness, Father God, of protection. For God, he has become his own protector to protect his heart from wounds and hurts. But I thank you for the release and the trust to be restored. The trust to be restored, Father God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you to heal every wound on the inside of him. In Jesus' name. I break the power of every spirit of fear. Fear of man, fear of the unknown, fear even sometimes of the future. I break your power and command you fear out in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I thank you that there'll be a release that he will feel in this area of his body and under his rib cage, Father, he shall not suffer from the tightness that would come that makes one feel that hyperventilation that's caused by fear. I say no more. He's free. He's free. He belongs to God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. He's still in, right? I thank you for Dylan. I thank you for your faithful servant. Father, I thank you for your love that flows through him. Father, I thank you that here is a giver, not just of material things, but a giver of self. And the Spirit of God would say unto you, Dylan, you don't have to earn my acceptance. It's there because you are mine. You have the robe of my son upon you. Therefore, you are accepted in the beloved. You do the good things that you do not to be accepted, but because you love me and you love my children and you love to do for me. Father, I just thank you for your anointing to flow right now. Father, I break the power of every harsh word that's been loosed over him in the past. I break the power of those words of put down, Father God, and I release him from their effect now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If there's any ladies or young ladies over here, would you just come real quickly, please? Hallelujah. 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 
Oh, mighty woman of God. The enemy has said, just let me do this, and I'll have her in my hands. But your God has said, no, no, you can't have her. For the love in her heart for me is greater than the wound that you have put in her heart. And this day, say of the Lord, a snapping and a breaking and releasing coming forth. For you have a heart that loves so deeply and so greatly. But you also tend to say it's my fault. If I'd done this, if I'd done that, if I'd been here, if I'd been there. And I say, daughter, don't you think I know everything? Don't you think I understand even the timing? Don't think it is an accident. You were where you were. I loose my healing now, saith the Lord. And I release you from the guilt and the condemnation that the devil has put on you. Right now, in Jesus' name, every spirit of guilt, every spirit of condemnation, every spirit of shame, out in Jesus' name. Every spirit that says you just let everybody down, out in the name of Jesus. Father, we receive your anointing. For God, there's things we don't understand. And we won't understand till we step into heaven and say, Precious Father, please, please explain to me. Father, I thank you that until then, we just sit in your lap and we wrap our arms around you. And we say, Father, we love you. We love you. We don't understand, but we love you. We love you. <laughs> Now, every tormenting spirit, you loose her right now. You loose her and come out in the name of Jesus. Release her in Jesus' name. I command the depth of that root to be pulled out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, for some reason you say it's tied to the womb. And I guess that means it's tied to the motherhood. But Father, I cut and I sever every tie that would hold it in a place, God, that prevents her from releasing and letting go. God, that was her seed. But God, what better hands could her seed be in than in yours? We release, we release him right now. We release him right now. Right now, we lay him in your loving arms, precious Jesus. We let it go. I command that root to loose her womb yes. right now in the name of Jesus. Release it. Let it go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your strength. God, I ask for a fight to come in this woman. I ask for a determination that says, Devil, you are going to be so sorry you touched me and mine. Oh, yes. oh, God, let her be the one who plunders heaven, plunders hell the greatest, and populates heaven through every plunder, oh God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I ask that you bring a healing. The bleeding stop, Father God, and the wound be healed. And Father, again, that you take the scar. We don't want to forget every precious life. But God, they will not be hemorrhaging anymore. In Jesus' name. Ever seducing this in the Holy Spirit. Living Spirit, you go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I just place my hand here and I command healing. And I command the spirit of infirmity to loose. I command the root that you have put down in her to be removed. Jesus' name. And I loose life. Life, life to flow, life to flow, life to flow, life to flow, 
Father, life shall pass out of her into others, out through her hands, out through her heart. In Jesus' name, she will not seal her heart anymore. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, I just thank you for that anointing, that releasing of every spirit of rejection, every wound and every hurt, everything that says you're not special. I command you lying spirit to loose her and go in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask you to take the emptiness that is buried within her, the times of loneliness, Father God, for God making a choice to live for you brought a loneliness and I ask you to release her of it now in the name of Jesus father we just receive your healing and father I thank you as she hand hands to you all of this hurt all of this anger you take it father God and it cannot it cannot bring depression anymore in Jesus name in Jesus name Father, I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the flow of your spirit. I thank you, Father, that healing is coming into the female area of her body. And where rejection came to her as a female, as a woman, we lose her from its power and we command its roots to be pulled out now in the name of Jesus. For God knew you before the foundations of, an earth, of the earth and as the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost planned your life, they said, she shall be a woman for such a time as this. You're not a mistake. You shouldn't have been otherwise. You're exactly who God made you to be and created you to be and anoints you to be. Now walk in that anointing, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the anointing flowing through my sister right now. I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost, God, that is going deep down within her. I break the power of every spirit of shame that the enemy has brought to her. And Father, I say no more will she carry the hurt. No more will she carry the wounds right now. And no more will she carry false guilt. I lose her, God, from carrying the guilt that belongs on someone else and not her. I thank you, God. You are taking that and you are loosing her in all of the anger with it. I command you out, go. Father, we can't undo, but we can allow you to undo and bring healing and set us free. Thank you that you restore what the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar stole out of our life. That's your promise in Joel 2. And Father, we receive it for her life now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's flowing for my sister right now. Father, I break the power of the spirits of rejection and the wounds and the hurts, God, that have hindered her life. And Father, whatever it is that affects even the uh, female area of her body, I command the healing to be loosed. And I say rejection, you will not settle upon her as a woman and you will not steal from her femininity in the name of Jesus. Loose her right now. Father, people do things to us that are harsh, that are hard, that are bad. But God, it's not because we're bad. It's because we have a bad devil roaming this earth, looking at who he can destroy their destiny. But God, you've put her in a place that her destiny will be fulfilled. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for the anointing of the living God. I thank you for your power that flows through your daughter, Father God. Thank you for the joy of the Lord that is her strength. Now I command the rejection to release her right now in the name of Jesus. All rejection, I command you out, loose her in the name of Jesus. I break the powers that this wound has brought into her life. And Father, I thank you that you are the healer of wounds. I thank you for it. Thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for my precious sister. 
Thank you for your love for her. Father, I thank you that just as you've made her tall and you've made her strong, she's strong on the inside. There are many people who would have folded, Father God, had they had to walk in her steps. And Father, because she appears so strong, many have not understood the woundedness of her heart, but God, you have. And I thank you that this day you're saying, my daughter, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've walked in the strength of my son, even with hurts. And I am taking them today, saith God. And I am speaking to you that you might know you are precious to me and you are valuable to me. And I have never left you and never forsaken you. Hallelujah. Father, there's healing going into her body. I thank you for the fire that's going in right now. And Father, I thank you for the Holy Ghost to take it to the very organs and the very tissue that needs to be made whole. Father, I ask you, can I put my hand right here? I ask you to go in between where my hands are, Father, and bring healing into this area of her body. I command the spirit of pain to loose her and to go. That that would bring the strange twinges, we order it stopped in Jesus' name. And Father, I command the ovaries or that area of where they were to be made whole, every scar tissue removed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Did I pray for you? Father, I just thank you. It's Anne, right? Yeah. Thank you for precious Anne. Father, I ask that you fill the void that's been in her life. Father, for the times that she needed, she needed something special. A special touch, a special hug, a special encouragement. And God, she didn't hear it. But Father, you're giving it to her. As you're saying, well done, daughter. Well done. And it's as if God is saying to tell you, you're a good mama. You're a good mother. You are full of love, and you are expressing that love to your little one. And God said, don't be down on yourself. Don't be down on yourself. Father, I command every spirit of rejection to loose her right now. And I command the wounds that would cause her to sometimes be like she's thin-skinned and get hurt by things that shouldn't hurt her and then get mad at herself that she got hurt. I break the power of that right now. And Father, I thank you. She will not have to walk in that type of timidity and people will not have to walk on an eggshell around her either. For God, you're bringing wholeness right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let your response be, I am a work in progress. That's what God says to tell you. You're a work in progress. And he's doing a beautiful work in you. Hallelujah. So don't condemn yourself. Okay? Just say, okay, God, I'm a work in progress. You're making me whole. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for this lady. Father, I break the power of every spirit of abandonment. I command you to loose her right now in the name of Jesus. I break the power of the spirits of loneliness. I command you out in the name of Jesus. Father, she's been like one that has felt an emptiness and tried to fill it sometimes in the wrong ways. And these ways did not bring fulfillment, but only made matters worse. Father, I thank you to loose her from every wound and to bring healing and wholeness. And Father, to bring the joy of the Lord that is her strength. I thank you, Father, to bring your, uh, your dancing feet to her, that instead of the tears of mourning, there will be shouts of joy and rejoicing and dancing in her life. And every time she feels that thing of the past that comes to make her feel sorrowful or sad, instead, Father, she will dance before you with the oil of joy. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
Many may not know what goes on in the secret places of your heart and in the secret places of your home, but God knows. And he says, as you begin to change your response to the thoughts and to the memories that come to you, there will be a release of that type of thinking and sorrow. Amen? I saw you dancing. And it's like you just strip off the old and put on the new because you're hit with it more when you're alone than when you're in the midst of other people. And so that's the place to just dance all over the room while you're there alone rather than letting it put you into the pit. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you for this lady. Father, there's been times the devil has said, if you were a better mother, if you were a better this, if you were a better that, devil, you're a liar. Now go from her. I command every tormenting, accusing spirit to shut your mouth and get out. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the joy of the Lord that is her strength. Father, I release her from every spirit that makes her feel like a failure, that makes her feel insignificant, that makes her feel unimportant. I loose her from that. And Father, I thank you to help her to see that many times people hold off because of goodness that they see, not because of uh, anything negative. Father, it was something in them that had to pull away. I thank you for your love, your love, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God just showed me a situation in my life and I don't know how it relates, but I know that it does. When I taught school many years ago, every time I walked into the teacher's lounge, everybody would get quiet and then start filing out of the room. And I thought, what have I done? They don't like me. And the day I was to leave, they gave me a good bye party. And the man who was always talking when I walked in said, I guess you noticed how we'd get quiet when you came in. And I said, yes. And he said, well, we were always in the middle of the best dirty joke when you walked in. And he said, we knew you weren't that type of person. Be free right now in the name of Jesus. Be free of the wounds of abandonment. Be free of the wounds of the enemy. In Jesus' name, I command the hurt to come out right now. Right now, all of it. We just pull it out. In Jesus' name. The hurt of the ministry. It's got to come out of me. That I was in. Okay. Father, I thank you to go deep right now. Father, she needs some answers. Father, I ask in the days to come as she picks up your word and as she begins to read. Father, I ask that you begin to give her the explanations, the truth. The truth. Father God, let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Father, I bind up every spirit of deception. I bind up every seducing, deceiving spirit. And I thank you, God, that your truth, your answers will flow in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kole ma si di lida ki kodora. Si de data. I malaba si di lida ki kodora. I data. God says to tell you those that compare themselves among themselves are not wise. Don't look at your friends, don't look at other people and compare what you have or what you see about yourself or what your uh, prospects are, anything of this sort. Don't compare among yourselves. Look at Jesus, that's the only comparison 
that we have. And his love for you is equal. His love for you is equal, and that's what matters. And you are beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. And he says to tell you, you're beautiful. And don't let anyone tell you different. Hallelujah. Father, I break the power of every spirit of rejection, every spirit that would put her down and make her feel second best and make her feel unworthy, Father God, and make her just say, okay, I just accept this is my status in life. For God, you say that's not true. She shall soar like an eagle, and there shall come a day when she sees that those that have put her down and those that have tried to walk over her and those that have said, lay down and let me step over, they are going to be the ones who come to her and say, will you pray? Will you help me? Will you counsel me? For God, the gift of counsel is within her. And I thank you to bring it forth with an anointing and a purity, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I break the power of insecurity that the enemy tries to cloak her in. I break the power of every spirit of rejection and every spirit of emotional abandonment. And I say no more can it torment her. I commend her to be released right now. Father, I break the power of the words of peers and the attitudes of peers and how their effect has has uh, marred and harmed her on the inside. I loose her from that. Father, may she become secure in your love for her. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Father, I just thank you for the anointing for Vivian. Thank you for the flow, Father God, of your anointing for her. Thank you for the healings, Father God, that you are ministering to her. Thank you, God. She's come so far. She has come so far, and you've done such a mighty work within her. And I just praise you for what I sense and what I see. And God, I ask that there be no remaining scars left in Jesus' name. Don't let that push you. Oh, le I break the power of every spirit of rejection off of you. Look at me. If I were Jesus standing here, he would be telling you how much he loves you, how precious you are to him. He knows every hurt, he knows every wound, and he heard every word, every slap, and every action. But he had nothing to do with it. But he has held you in his arms all this time. So, Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost this bringing healing and bringing life. Father, I thank you that the real person within her, the real her, will be loosed beginning this day and this hour. Every spirit called a fear of man and what man would say, I break your power and I command you to come off. And every harsh and hard word that's been spoken to her as a human being, I break the power of those words and I say they're lies, devil, and they will not work in her mind anymore. Father, I release herself. I release her to see herself as the beautiful person you've created her to be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I feel like God says to tell you to make a list of those that have hurt you and begin to bless them, begin to speak blessings. And it's going to release you, but it's also going to bring healing into them. And you may think, well, they don't deserve a blessing. Well, their actions don't, that's true. But you releasing the blessing releases you and releases them out of the hold of the devil. See, you're defeating the devil every time you release a blessing over one who's been cruel, who's been unkind, who's rejected you, okay? Okay, you just bless them. That's what Jesus does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the power that's going into my sister to release her, Father, of all subconscious anger. For God, there are times that words come out of her mouth with a tone that she never meant it to be, and then she hates herself for it. Father, I thank you to loose her right now of that that is buried deep, that has never been completely made whole. And I ask you to do it today, God, in Jesus' name. The anointing of God is going down your hips and your legs for uh, emotions have settled in your hips, in your joints. And God said, I'm loosing that and bringing healing today. Father, I thank you for this precious lady. I thank you, Father, for her precious smile. Father, I loose her right now from the fear of man and what man would say, from the fear of words, from the fear of being chewed out, from the fear of being called stupid. Father, for she's not. She just thinks from a different part of the brain than those around her think. But we all get to the same place, just coming a different way. And God said, don't let your intelligence be insulted. Don't receive it. You're just working from a different side of the brain, which is normal. Just not normal to the one who would want to say, are you stupid, can't you think? God said, that's a lie. No, you're not stupid. And I break the power of every word of put down right now in the name of Jesus. And I release you to know that truly the mind of Christ flows through your mind and wisdom is yours and knowledge of how to walk in it is available through Jesus, through the Word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for this precious lady. I want to put my hand right here, please. There's healing flowing into this area of your body. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break the power of every spirit of rejection. Father, I break the power of the um, words that were spoken over her at birth and as a tiny baby, Father. For there were those that did not understand the importance of her birth, that did not understand the importance that this was a young woman that you destined for such a time as this. Father, I loose her from the misunderstandings, from the confusion, from the feelings of not being wanted or needed. I loose her from that right now in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you for your love and your hand that's upon her. I thank you that you have never abandoned her and you have never forsaken her. And nor have you ever given up upon her. Father, but your hand and your call is still there. And she belongs to you. Father, I thank you for that anointing in Jesus' name. Thank you for that healing. Now, Father, I command the internal anger to let her go right now. Father, there's times when it's like she would eat herself alive, when she would release acid into her body that would cause the uh, esophagus, the intestines to be affected, Father God. And it was just an internal emotional reaction based upon words and based upon life. And God, I loose her from that right now and release healing in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the anointing for this lady. Father, I thank you that we're never too old to be made whole. Father, I ask that healing especially flow from the times of about 25 years of age up till now. I break the power of the rejection that has been in this area of her life that has caused her to feel that she's less than best. Father God, I break the power of that. I loose her from the suffering, Father God, that has gone on in her heart. God, there's been some things you just don't tell everybody, you don't talk about publicly. But you weep your heart out, God, in the middle of the night. And I ask you to heal her and to set her free right now from that. For, Father, that person was not able to love because of wounds of that person. 
Father, we just send the anointing and the blessings of God into the ones who have brought some of this wounding, Father, and thank you. Thank you to bring life, bring life, bring life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for this precious one. Thank you, Father, that there's a destiny that awaits for her, that is calling for her. Father, I thank you that you made plans. The Bible says there were works that you said this is for her to do. And Father, I thank you she hasn't missed you, and she's not going to miss you. But she's right on step. And God, she doesn't have to push anyone down to get there. You're big enough to get her there. God, as she loves you, as she pours herself into you, at your feet in worship, God, you shall cause the doors to open in the path. The power of every spirit called fear of making a mistake. Loose her right now and go. I break the power of condemnation that's been released upon her when she did something that somebody else deemed to be stupid. And we say, devil, shut your mouth. And we break the power of those put down words in Jesus' name and loose her confidence, Father, to trust her decisions to trust you to help her make them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, she's carried this long enough. We just hand it to you, Father. We place it upon your platter that's standing before her. And we say, God, we didn't do a good job with it. We just let it wound us and hurt us. Now we give it to you that it might become a praise in your kingdom. Father, I thank you for your healing to go deep within her. I thank you for the release and the setting free of the rejections, Father God. For God, there were times that it, she just couldn't understand why it was someone else, why it wasn't her, God, why she wasn't the one chosen. Father, thank you to loose her and to heal her and to set her free now in Jesus' name. Now I command every spirit of rejection and self-rejection, let her go right now in the name of Jesus. I command that deep, deep wound out in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, help her to fall in love with Jesus as never before. As never before, God. Return her to her first love, I pray. And God, we command every wall and every barrier that's been put up through life to be broken down and destroyed where she can fall at your feet and worship you as she once did and as she longs to do again. And I thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, God bless you. Father, I just speak, God, bless this lady. Bless her, God, and bless her voice. Did you used to sing and you stopped? Stop singing? All right. God bless her voice, for there is a voice within here that you destined to sing your praises. Father, I ask you to release her from the walls that hold her down, the chains that hold her down in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for this lady. I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to flow through her right now. Father, I break the power of every spirit of emotional abandonment for God, it's like that there were times and she was a little girl and she was just told to be quiet and to get out of the way and, and don't bother. Everybody was so busy. Everybody had their own wounds. Everybody had their own hurts. And it's like they never saw the hurt of this little child. They never saw that she didn't understand. They never saw that she needed to be helped. And just know, I know you're alive. 
Father, I thank you for healing right now to pour into the depths of her being. Thank you for the release of that abandonment. And God, I thank you that healing is going into her body. For the Spirit of the Lord would say to you, you don't need to be sick, you don't need to be weak, to be noticed and to be loved. It shall come because my son Jesus shall be seen flowing through you and out of you. And the strength of Jesus shall be your newfound strength. There is healing anointing going into your body like a fire right now, like a heat lamp has been shined upon you. Receive that work of the Lord and let go of every crutch that the enemy has offered as a substitute. Now I command the crutches to break off right now in the name of Jesus. Every little girl spirit, every runaway spirit, every spirit of escape, go in Jesus' name. Go. Father, I thank you. This is your Esther. This is your Esther. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. For God made you to be a queen for such a time as this. Kole ma si di le da ki kodo ra si de ta ta. Ila ma ki kodo ra si de ta. Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the release of the anger, Father God. Thank you for the release of the rejection, Father. That that has gone deep within her. And God, it seems to have strings that just attach itself down into her body and holds on. And no matter how many times she says, I let it go, it just pops back in like a rubber band. But devil, we say this is her day. This is her time. We cut those bands right now. Whatever the rejection and the hurts and the wounds are tied to, we sever it right now. And God, we release blessings and forgiveness to those who brought the hurts and brought the woundness. For God, as we bless, we release ourselves from Satan's hold and Satan's ability to work against us. For as we are blessing and forgiving, we are walking in the power of the kingdom and we are loosening Satan's grip on those who hurt us. I thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'd break the power of every spirit of anger right now, every spirit of depression, everything that there's times that she feels she has to fight it before she comes out of the house, before she gets around people, before she adjusts her face where she puts that smile so that nobody could possibly know the hurt and the wound that's in there. Father, we give you that hurt, we give you that wound, we, you know the cause of it, God, and we thank you to pour out your oil and bring your healing in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, we may hide from man, but we can't hide from you. So I just thank you, thank you for your healing. And as there is a release taking place today, there is anointing that's going down your legs and it's going to open up the blood vessels that flow down to your feet. And even in your feet, there is going to be a healing that you are to know. God wants you to know it came today as you came to let it all go. Your blood flow was released. Now, every spirit of anger that would uh, grip within her and grip the flow of the blood, you loose her right now in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Father, I thank you for your precious daughter. Father, I thank you for the anointing that's flowing from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just release that anointing to flow through her from the top down to the bottoms of her feet. Thank you for healing. Father, you've done such a beautiful work such a beautiful work within her, Lord. And Father, she just submits herself to you that you continue 
we thank you for it. We thank you for it. Father, I loose her of every spirit that would come to condemn her, that would come to put her down. And I say, no, you don't, devil. She wears the robe of righteousness. She is washed in the blood of the Lamb. She is shining with the glory of her Savior, and you can't get it from her. She knows who she is. Hallelujah. I see the devil coming to bring words of condemnation. But it's like God said, I have put within you who you are in Jesus. And all you have to do is raise your hands and holler, Hallelujah, devil, you're just jealous because I'm forgiven, I'm blood bought, and I'm cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. And God said, all you've got to do stuff can't stop. Even though he's tried and he has attached himself, uh, I, I sense the attachment, especially on your legs. So that lets me know he's trying to harm your circulation. But God says, no, he can't. He can't. He has no right. And you remember that. Devil, you have no rights. I'm blood bought. The blood is better than Clorox. It bleaches. There is no, there is no odor. There is nothing of the devil left when we allow the blood to do the work. And you've done that. And God said, now preach it, sister. There's other people that need to be set free. You have got a message of kingdom living within you. And you have a message of what it means to be snatched out of the power of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. And God said, now go snatch them out. Set free. Be so angry at the devil that he ever touched you. And you're not going to let him touch others with the power God gives you to set them free. Hallelujah. Oh, man, there's a preacher there. But you're the one that preaches, aren't you? Or does she? She's the one? Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. My goodness, there's a power in that girl. But you have it, too. There is a sweet counsel that flows through your being. There is a compassion that is within you that shall release divine healing. God said, take every opportunity you've got to pray for those who need healing, to pray for those that have been put down and to pray for those that have been wounded and hurt because that anointing flows through you to set captives free. Father, I ask for the impartation of the gift of the word of knowledge to begin to flow in a deeper way. We shall have an understanding of the woundings of a person, God, and the needs of a person. And she will be able to flow with the Holy Ghost, Lord, to know how to pray and what to pray, to see them set free. Now I break the power of every spirit of inferiority. Every spirit that causes you to judge yourself among yourselves and to say, they're the anointed one. No, you begin to say, they're anointed, but I'm anointed too. I am anointed of the Holy Ghost to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ wherever Jesus sends me and captives will be set free. You don't deny somebody else has an anointing, but you don't deny your anointing because they are anointed. There's a difference, okay? It's not vanity, it's empowerment. And God empowers you. See, I used to travel with Cindy Jacobs. She is anointed, but I have an anointing too. And just because she's anointed doesn't mean I can't be. I don't have to be like her. I don't have the boldness yet that I've seen her walk in, but that's okay. She's her, I'm me. There's others in the family, but you're you, and you're anointed too. You're just different. But that's and Ruth Ann, God said, when you <clears throat> accept this and you release it out of your mouth, God said it's going to release a power out of you that's been restrained and held back. And God said it'll be like a rushing river that'll gush out of you, that'll even shock you. But when you say, I'm anointed, I'm anointed, I'm anointed, I am anointed, because you are then it's going to release things in you that have been hidden, that have been trapped by your own self-image. It's going to release it <clears throat> like a river that's been dammed up. 
and you're going to be shocked at the power and the flow and the anointing and all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So you Amen. release it with your mouth. And there's times God will give you a song. And as you sing that prophetic song, it will minister life just as a prophetic word will. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this lady. Father, I asked you to go deep within her and pull out the wounds that have come in the last uh, <clears throat> 20 years of life in particular. Father, I break the power of every spirit of abandonment, emotional abandonment, every spirit of rejection, every wound and every hurt. Father, I asked you to bring healing, and I break the power of words that have condemned her, both from the devil, from humans, and from herself, God. I loose her from the power of the put-downs that she has allowed to be spoken within herself by getting in agreement with what she has heard. Now, Father, I break the words of agreement that she has agreed upon that would put her down, that would make her second fiddle. And I say, no, devil, that is not truth. And I refuse to allow it to stand any longer. Do you hear what God is saying to you? That when you get in agreement with the negative thoughts against you that hears, you hear, you're empowering it. And you need to start saying, no, you don't. No, you don't. And if you fail some way where you really goof, you know, you just tell whoever you need to tell. You keep watching. God's at work within me. There'll come a day you won't see that. Okay? Because God's at work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, I just minister your healing right now to this woman. Father, I ask that you go deep within her, into her womanhood area, Father. For God, there have been wounds that have come into her as a woman, as a, a, a mother or, or whatever it is, uh, God, that would affect her as a female. Father, I ask for your healing power to be released right now into those deep places. And God, it's like there's areas of her life she's pushed down and she said, that's over, that's done, and I'm not going there. But yet, Father, it's releasing anger when certain circumstances come forth or certain words are spoken. So, Lord, I ask that you release her completely right now and bring the healing from the past and release the anger that truly has not been dealt with in Jesus' name. And I see you. This is the first time I've heard God speak this to people. There's some people you need to bless. When you curse them, when you get angry at them, in, or the memories of them, you are just giving the devil more fuel to fight with. But when you begin to bless them, he can't touch you because you're not sinning. You're blessing. And it gives God a place to go in and do a work on other people. It empowers the kingdom through you, through your choice. Okay? okay. Hallelujah. I'm going to go and pray for this man back here that has cancer. Okay. So don't let that money come on. just prayed for a lady in our church. She was stage four. She had cancer in her brain, mm -hmm. her breast, her lymph nodes, her bone, mm -hmm. her liver, her lungs. Mm -hmm. She's healed. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you get ready to receive your healing. Now, I'm going to pray for this man, so y'all just pray with us, okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, I break the power of the devil to accuse him. I break the power of the devil to say, you did this and you did that. Father, I loose his body from the effects of anything. He ate, he drank, he smoked, he did anything that would have affected his liver. Father, we break the power of any sin 
that would have opened the door for you said, whosoever you for sins you forgive are forgiven. Amen. And God, we declare any sin is forgiven. And now, devil, I give you notice, he's off limits to you, 100%. This man belongs to Jesus. <clears throat> Father, I command every spirit of anger that is settled in this liver, that has affected this liver, I command it out in the name of Jesus. I command the spirit of cancer out in the name of Jesus. Father, I release the healing virtue of the living God, Jesus Christ, into his liver. Father, I give a command by the highest authority, by the authority of Jesus Christ himself, by using his name, Jesus, Jesus, spirit of death, death wish, go in Jesus' name. Cancer, go in Jesus' name. Infirmity, go in Jesus' name. Hopelessness, fear, go in Jesus' name. Father, may there become a cry rally within him. I shall live and not die to proclaim the glory of God. I shall live and not die to proclaim the glory of God. I command healing into his spine. I command everywhere that there is something that brings a fatigue and a tiredness. I order it out in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Before uh, she spoke, I shall live and not die. I heard God say to tell you to say that. Say, because Proverbs 6, 2 says you're snared by the words of your mouth. You're taken by your very own words. Proverbs 18, 21 says, The power of life and death is in the tongue. Mm -hmm. What if you can be snared by your words? You can be set free by your words. Mm -hmm. See, and when you say, I shall live and not die. See, the, the devil has no right to take your life. He has no right to touch you because Jesus owns you, okay? But he's a thief, so he comes in. So you stand against him and you just <laughs> say, No, you don't. No, you don't. I will live and not die to proclaim the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And y'all say it too. Every time you think about it, say it and get angry. Yes. See, you're 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 the type of person that you're not like me. You don't like no. to rip people's throats out by the roots. I'm more quiet. <laughs> what? You're what? I'm very quiet. Very quiet. Well, you're not gonna stay quiet because you gotta get vicious. That's See, true. the Bible says the violent take it by force. Now, if I started trying to take your 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 bill for wherever it's at and your money, you'd say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, God, I'm at the moment. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, for kings, you got a million. You'd say, yeah, you can't do that. Give me that back. You wouldn't let me get away with it. No. Well, the devil's trying to take your life. So don't let him get away with it. That's right. Okay? Uh -huh. He has no right. And forget this stuff about the fact that, well, I've sinned and I just deserve it. We got friends over in India and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. They see right. unbelievable miracles. People never even heard the name of Jesus. They're idol worshipers. Mm -hmm. And Jesus still heals them. How much more, son? Amen? So you just thank God, receive your healing, and this is the most important thing you can say out of your mouth. I believe I received my healing. Now when you first start saying that, the devil's going to speak to you and he's going to tell you, you're a liar, you don't no more believe that in the man of the moon. And when you first start saying it, you may not. But the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more you say and the more y'all say, I believe I received my healing, I shall live and not die to proclaim the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith is going to rise in your heart, and pretty soon you're going to believe it. That's right. Uh -huh. I know from experience, okay? <laughs> I could talk to you for hours, but I know that Joy is hungry. <laughs> I can feel him pulling on me. 